Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance. Today's video is going to be Guess the Trade. I mentioned in a community post earlier this week that if anybody wanted to send me photos of their loadout and setup, people who don't normally have YouTube channels or anything like that, uh, that you could email them to me and that we'd look over them and talk about them and just look and see what maybe your setups are and then play Guess the Trade. And by Guess the Trade, I'm not meaning that you have to be a licensed electrician, plumber, carpenter, whatever in a specific trade, but what kind of work does this person do with their setup? So you could be a homeowner, business owner, you've got a tool bag, you've got some tools. What is the main thing that we think someone does with these tools is really what the question is. So I got this idea from Matt HMM. He emailed me about some other things uh, this week or last week one and kind of threw this out as a suggestion. He said he'd seen some other channels do it. And I thought it was a great idea for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is we get to maybe see some setups, some tools that we didn't know existed by someone who we would probably never see their video on YouTube. So we get to learn something from that. I think that's a good thing. We get to ask, hey, what's that tool? Uh, what is it that you do for a living? How do you use that? Or some kind of questions like that about these bags. And again, I'm not going to guess what this person does for myself in this video. That's for the comment section. We're gonna to try to figure out what they are in the comment section because I might already know. I might have talked to these people in comments on other videos to where I've had conversations with them about a tool and they say they do this for a living. So there's a pretty good chance in conversations back and forth with someone or they might have sent it to me with the pictures and I already know what it is. So I don't wanna give anything away Although I might give hints or something like that uh, throughout the process, like, hey, this person's got an awful lot of client tools. Client tools tend to lead me towards somebody does something in wiring, not to say that somebody, there's not plumbers out there that have client screwdrivers or all those things, but we're gonna look at those photos on my iPad here. I'm gonna swap back and forth between me and you know cutaways of their, their pictures and stuff like that. I'm not gonna discuss the tools in great detail, because uh, again, the idea behind this is just to get an overview. I, if I looked at all three of these, I've got three of them that we're going to look at today. And I talked about every tool. This video could be two hours long. You know how I get whenever I start talking about tools. I know I ramble on a lot. So I'm going to try not to do that as best as I can. Plus, it's pretty cold out here. It's six degrees outside. I've got on my Milwaukee heated jacket. I got on toboggan. That's why I'm wearing this stuff. It's pretty cold. I think it's like 30 degrees here in my building right now. I can't run a heater while I'm filming, but we're gonna go ahead and get into these. And again, I might give hints, but the comment section is where all these are full or, or where all these questions and answers are gonna come. Hopefully these three people uh, that sent me in photos are gonna be available to be able to answer some of these questions for us in the comment section below. But the first one we're gonna get into is Oshak Hennessy, it's Jason. So we're gonna look at his bags and see what we think about what he does for a living or how does he use these tools in his line of work. So let's go ahead and get into his. So we look here at his bag, we can see he's got a Vito Pro Pack. This is a tech pack, it's one of those backpacks. Front of it, we see that he's got an M12 drill. So maybe that gives you some hint. To me, M12 tools tend to lead towards service people, but I'm telling you 12 volt tools have come so far that you know it could be anybody just about, because I use my 12 volt tools all the time. The only time I get out my M18 stuff is just if I want the batteries to last longer all day or something. But power wise, all 12 volt tools, whether it's M12, I'm sure the DeWalt 12 volt stuff and all that stuff, just as powerful as well. So that's not as big a hint as what it used to be. Has bits over here on the side on those key rings. He's got a Malco quarter five sixteenths, a couple DeWalt's uh, and then some bits and then a couple of markers, tape measure on that side. So that's the outside of his bag. Then we're gonna look at his business end of his bag or what I like to call it as you open it up, it's the front end. Uh, he's got a Milwaukee bit case there with some small bits in it. I like that idea. I actually have those Milwaukee I have one of those Milwaukee cases and I'm not using it for anything and that thing will fit in your bag probably pretty well. So already there's one little tip I'm getting off of this. I think I'm gonna swap that over and put that in my bag as a little container for wire nuts and things like that. Uh, Milwaukee headlamp, those seem to be pretty good. I've kind of swapped over to Olight, but I had the benefit of them sending them to me, but I did run Milwaukee before that. Uh, we get back here in the back, he's got a made in the USA screwdriver of some sort. It looks a lot like a lot of the ones that I have that are like Torx. Uh, screwdrivers. I'm not sure what that is though. A DeWalt nail set. An Ulfa knife. Many of you love those Ulfa knives. Uh, I've bought a couple in the last little bit. Stefan Kavalik, he, he loves those. He sent me his favorite one. I'm going to pick that one up. There's a flashlight in Ontario, Canada. Made in Ontario, Canada. So if you know what flashlights are made there, hit us up in the comments below. Stud Buddy. Uh, we got a Fluke non-contact voltage tester. That's the A1C2. Uh, that's one of my favorite ones. And then a Milwaukee light. It is hard to beat that little Milwaukee light right there. For the price 
and the output that you get out of it it's like the batteries last for a long time the magnets are great on it that's a really good light within itself and then also we have i keep I, every time i do this if you see that on the screen i'm checking to make sure my screen is still recording because last time i filmed some of this it cut out on me uh, milwaukee demolition driver also got a klein looks like small little thermostat screwdriver probably the four and one klein insulated multi screwdriver uh, that is this type right here uh, insulated multi if you can see that there it's got those blade changes i really like this klein screwdriver uh, if you don't have one of those it's a really good price for like 19 bucks and then you can buy the extra blades if you want to but that's a good screwdriver there also got an empire it looks like torpedo level i'm not sure what these blue handle pliers are I'd like to know that in the comments below because to me that's a little bit too blue for channel lock. Uh, so I'm not sure what brand that is. He's got a pair of Husky pliers of some kind, a couple adjustable wrenches. And then he gets into the Knipix corner over here or Knipix slash. Got a few other things. There's a pair of Engineers and also a pair of Milwaukee strippers it looks like. Probably a pair of Knipix needle nose right there in the bottom. And then he has a 180, a 250, and then also a 300. Those are probably the 10, 12, and 7 and a quarter uh, Knipix Cobras. And then along with the 250, probably if I had to guess, although the handles don't look like a pliers wrench to me, I wanted to say those are a pliers wrench, but maybe those are bolt cutters or something. It's the something 03 250. I can't tell what the first two numbers are. So maybe that's a pair of bolt cutters or uh, the Knipix Cobalt cutters, whatever the name is for those. Uh, but uh, let us know that in the comments below, or if you all know, you can comment that down below as well. So next picture uh, is the backside. Uh, looks like he's got room to grow in this, so I don't know if that's a hint to us. Uh, I always say to myself, uh, usually I pack my bags full, but maybe this is someone who's building their tool kit, and they don't need tools every single day, but they're only buying them whenever the job comes up because that's my recommendation to homeowners or business owners or whatever. Don't go out and just buy tools because you see contractors using them. Wait and see what it is that you actually do at your house or at your business and the tools that you're going to need because there's no sense in you going out and buying maybe some HVAC tools that you know you're going to hire that out because you don't want to touch it. You know, So there's no sense in you buying some of the things that you might watch an HVAC contractor use and think you're going to use them. Uh, I think that that's a good way for a homeowner or somebody to build out their tools. And I'm not saying that's what he does. I'm just giving you hints that that would lean me in a direction if I see someone's tool bag still has room to grow. And that also might tell you that this Vito Tech Pack, you know, has plenty of room for you to be able to add more tools in it if you need to. So we look at this backside. That looks like that ideal cable splitter right there uh, that you uh, cut the sheathing off Romex with and then strip wires. He has a beater chisel. I don't know what's inside this little bag right here. I don't know if that's safety glasses, maybe. That's what it kind of looks like to me. Uh, I think maybe that right there are blades for the Ulfa knife. Maybe it's 25 blades for it. I'm not sure on that either. It's got some hex keys, the Linux folding jab saw, very small hammer. That looks like one of them hammers with a really small handle. Probably the Fat Max. Those look like they are uh, uh, snips. And then a Unity meter uh, somebody just told me about this unity meter just the other day uh, that it would probably fit in the mp1 pouches uh, where if you want to carry a small meter with you that has all the functions that might be one that you want to look into i haven't had one but it does look like it fits in that pouch pretty good so it's a small compact meter uh, i think those run you about 50 something dollars on amazon or something like that I'll, I'll put a picture of it up here if i find it so so that's the three pictures that Oshak sent me. So again, look those over or think about those things. Guess in the comments below, what is the main thing that you think this that he does for work? And it could just be uh, maintenance, in my opinion, would be, I'd just say that, uh, because it looks like to me he's got a plethora of tools that he could do a lot of different things maybe with. Or maybe you just say, well, I think he does more electrical work than he does whatever. And then hopefully Oshak, he can answer you in the comments below if he wants to, or even answer about what tools are we looking at? Like for instance, those blue handle tools back here, right there. I'd like to know what those are because I have no idea what they are. I just like to know what those are for my own curiosity's sake. So that is uh, Oshak's pictures that he sent me. Again, comment down below if you've got any questions for him. If you notice something that you think he's missing, especially after you 
guess what he does if he says that's what it is and say, hey, I think that you should look at this tool. I think it would benefit you greatly. That might be something you want to do as well. So the next person we're going to look at is Rob Holland. He sent me in a couple pictures of some different things. He's got a couple bags that we're going to look at. And then he laid his pictures, all his tools out. So I'm going to briefly go over uh, the bags and kind of show them to you. And then we'll get to that picture where all his tools are laid out. And we'll talk about those. And again, there's no right or wrong way for you to send me your pictures. If you want to send them to me in your bag like that, I think sometimes it's fun to kind of try to guess and see if we know what those pictures are or what those tools are just by looking at the handles. You know, it makes me think, man, I know my tools quite a bit. I can tell just by looking at that handle what it is. I think that's kind of fun. It's kind of a puzzle to try to do within itself. But then if you want to lay them out like what I'm about to show you that Rob has done, uh, you could do that as well. But let's go ahead and look at Rob's pictures. So here's the first picture of Rob's. Uh, you can see he carries Milwaukee pack out and then also a Velocity bag. These are both two tool bags that I've thought about getting a couple times. Uh, the Milwaukee pack out, of course, I'm in pack out. I don't normally carry a stack though. Uh, so and plus I've just grown to love Vito, so I'm kind of stuck with those. Uh, I can see why if you carried a stack more in particular that you might would want this kind of bag to throw it on the top, but I very rarely use my rolling toolbox. I keep it in my truck all the time as a storage box, and then I have the option to roll stuff out, but really unless I'm going in a factory or a mall or something that's got a long parking lot, I don't use them much. So here's an overview of that bag at this point and the outside of his bag. He's got some electrical tape there. You can see on the outside. Again, I'm not gonna go in detail about, you can look at the setup, I think, in case you wanna learn something from that. Uh, the next picture is both the bags open. Uh, so you can look at those there. And again, we're gonna look at all his tools laid out here in the next picture. He also collects some Funko Pops. He's got Chucky and then the Phantom of the Opera, it looks like over here, maybe some others. Uh, so there's that layout. But now let's go ahead and look at all his tools laid out before us. So he's got a tool, tough built uh, tool pouch as well. Many of you have been recommending those to me, especially I know the Vito MP1s. I know they're expensive. Uh, I know people don't want to spend that kind of money on them and I 100% get it. They are crazy expensive. The first time I bought that MP1 for $84, I think is what I paid for that. It was really hard for me to spend that money because it was one of my first Vito purchases too on top of that. And I just thought, man, that is a lot of money to spend on a pouch. But I mean, I absolutely love them. I'm not mad about spending that money, but I understand that not everybody's going to spend that kind of money. And it's probably hard to beat something like Tough Built whenever you can get a good pouch for less than 20 bucks. Uh, that's a really good deal on those. But let us know in the comments what you think about Tough Built. He's got some Vera insulated screwdrivers, uh, some looks like maybe stainless hex keys, uh, the Weeha hammer. I absolutely love that hammer. Uh, some keys up here as well, like cabinet type keys. I'm not sure what this right here is, uh, so maybe you all know. Uh, it might be something uh, from across the pond over there that y'all use pretty often. I don't know what that is. And then he's got this Marksman. Some of you recommended that to me. I know that's now available on Amazon here in the US too. It was something that we really couldn't get our hands on before, but I have seen it. I've thought about getting that a time or two, and I may end up picking that up. Also, 12-inch extension, stud buddy, another stud buddy, another Milwaukee demolition hammer. So they both, the both people we've looked at had those. Got a Pika pencil, love that. Got the Milwaukee five-in-one uh, knife. That's one of my favorites as well. A uh, laser distance measure, a Fat Max folding jab saw, torpedo level. Looks like a set of Torx Allen keys as well. He runs the Makita 14.4 volt. I have no experience in Makita tools really whatsoever, so I don't know anything about those. I do like that Facom or Facom. I don't know how you say that, but I do like that case. It looks like it flips, flips out. Probably easy to access those keys as well. Does have a multimeter. So again, that's going to lead you to know that he probably does some electrical work. Does he do a lot? We don't know. Does he do a little? We don't know. So it could be... Uh, maintenance field, electrician, low voltage, uh, you name it, could do all sorts of things. Now, I am curious at what this is. I briefly saw this. I have no idea what that is. I can tell it's a voltage detector of some kind. Uh, but if you guys know in the comments below what brand or what it is, I'm going to try to find it. But if you guys know, comment that down below. I also got some Knipix crimpers, several Knipix tools down as you go down through here. We got the Knipix cutter. He's also got the A1C2 fluke uh, detector, uh, some snips, some small thermostat type screwdrivers from Vera, Stubby Vera, some more Knipix electricians insulated tools. Rob's got a lot of insulated tools. You can see all these Weeha insulated screwdrivers. Uh, you get over here an insulated Weeha pair of pliers, some Cobras, some, a small pliers wrench, 10 inch alligator Cobras. 
I don't know what this is right here. I can tell it looks like it's some kind of a snip or shear of some kind, but it's I've not seen that one. Uh, that might be like Baco or something like that. It seems like the orange handles, that's maybe what that leans towards. I'm not sure. Comment below what that is as well, Rob, if you don't care, just so I kind of know, and then a pocket knife. So there's the layout of all his tools. Uh, so again, take a look at those and then guess down below. What is it? I, I would say something in the electrical more than anything based on his tools. I'd say he does more electric work than anything else, but he has tools to do some other things too, but that would be my guess personally. But again, I'm just saying that I don't know, or I'm not going to say if I do know anyways, I'm just throwing that out there as a hint to you because there's some things in here that obviously an electrician might not would use. So he also does maybe some other stuff as well, but it looks like to me for the bulk of it, those are the kind of tools that we're looking at. So that's Rob Holland. So again, comment down below if you've got questions for him or anything like that. So the next setup we're going to look at is the Assassin 8701. It's Jonathan. He sent me in a couple pouches that he carries, but he also said he carries Knipic Snips and the Milwaukee 5-in-1 knife in his pocket everyday carry. So he, he said, if you don't see that in there, throw that into the mix in order for you to guess what it is that he might do. Uh, but we look at this first picture. And again, I'm going to go through these pictures as far as these pretty quickly because there's one picture that kind of shows all of them at a different view that I think you'll get a better fit for it. But I don't know what this pouch is. I don't know what brand it is, but it does look like it stores quite a bit. So you might want to comment that down below because there's always people asking for alternatives to the veto pouches because they cost so much. And this one looks like it holds quite a bit. I do like them two front pouches uh, within here, uh, whatever those are. Uh, they look like they would hold quite a bit of materials or things like that that you could use so that might be pretty nice you got some snips and some other things but again let's go ahead and go through to the next picture so that's an overview kind of of this first pouch it looks like he also carries an mp1 as you can see here off to the side i think that's the mp1 and not the mp actually it's the mp1x i, I keep trying to catch myself from just saying mp1 uh, so again you can look here Lots of Klein tools. Uh, you got Klein two screwdrivers of some kind. I'm not sure which ones they are. And then a pair of probably 180 Cobras by the looks of it, a Malco, and then an Olight flashlight. I think if I go to the next picture, yeah, there's more. Here's a closer view of his MP1 as far as what's within that. So he's got that like 20 and one precision type screwdriver, I believe is what that Klein one is right there. I'm not sure if that's the Olight like Arc failed maybe or something like that. It's not a flashlight I think I have. I've been carrying that Arc Flex for a little bit. I actually do really like that Arc Flex flashlight. So uh, if, I've got a video for that one if you haven't seen it, but it's a pretty nice flashlight. I would have said that these handles back here in the back, they look like the Klein Legacy Diagonals, but then I saw that little EE sticking out right there. So those are probably a pair of Milwaukee strippers. Uh, probably the kind that has the smaller gauge wire on it, if I had to guess. And then there's also another pair of some kind of yellow pliers back there in the back. It does have a Pittsburgh, very small screwdriver of some kind right there as well. Probably a thermostat type screwdriver. So Malco ink pen flashlight. To me, this whole MP1X right here screams some sort of wiring. Now, it could be smaller wiring, bigger wiring. Uh, your guess is as good as mine or... That's a hint to you anyways, but you can decide for yourselves what you think below. Now let's go back to that bigger pouch and get kind of the overview on that. He does have green and white tape, so he's probably identifying stuff with green and white tape to give you an idea. And then I saw these paths through screwdrivers over here, half inch and nine sixteenths. Uh, that should throw you probably towards something as well. That should be a pretty good hint for you. And then also the dull, he's got a beater chisel back here. Uh, slotted back there as well and then a pair of 250s and then I don't know what this pair over here is my guess is those are Cobras 8701 250 and again there's that insulated Klein screwdriver again multi screwdriver that's a good one I think that 14 and one is a Milwaukee that looks like maybe the Klein jab saw so this uh the Assassin's a real big fan of Klein and as I hinted at the beginning that might tell you a little something and then you have a uh, claw there. I don't know if that's one with a pry bar probably on the bottom of it as well. Some of these things, I don't know what that is right there in that white. I don't know if that's another, some sort of a, another little pouch or what that is. So if you guys can tell just by looking at that what that is, let us know. Uh, got a Milwaukee tape measure. Milwaukee, I believe, snips over there on the side. 
there's a pair of Knipex something. Don't know what that is. And then there's some blue handles. So you've got some blue handles as well, uh, Jason. So let us know, or Jonathan, let us know what those blue handles are as well, because I can't tell. I think that those might be Klein, possibly strippers, small pair, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, then it looks like he also has like a file uh, in there. And then I don't know if that's the icon with the extension in it because it's sticking up pretty tall. That's not just the icon ratch, uh, wrench by itself, the little flex head. It might have the extension in it or it could be the Vim Tools one and maybe he didn't get the icon. Uh, small flashlight, looks like Milwaukee strippers. These two pliers behind the Milwaukee strippers, I'd like to know what those are because I can't tell uh, what they are off the top of my head that red right there and that blue if, if you want to let us know what that is and then i think that's an ncv non-contact voltage tester and then that looks like a pair of foldable hex wrenches it looks like the metal set i know klein sells a metal set so uh, there's again there's the picture of his bag overall so you can take a look at that and see what it is that you think about that but that's all three that I'm going to look at today. Again, I'm not going to, I'm trying to make this video not crazy long. I'm not going to talk about the tools a ton. I might even talk about them too much. You can let me know in the comments below if you just want to see more briefly whatever it is I'm showing you. But again, check out Rob's Oshacks and then the Assassin's Tools. They're set up. Guess what you think it is that they primarily do. So if you have any questions like what I had, like what's that tool that I saw with that blue handle down below? What is that? Uh, let us know that in the comments below. Uh, comment that down below. Hopefully they'll answer us and let us know what they are. Uh, again, what's their trade? What line of work do they do the most? What tool is that? Uh, or if you saw something, especially after you ask them, what is it that you do? Or you guess and they say, yeah, that is what I do. Or this is what I do. Say, hey, I noticed you didn't have one of these. Uh, we can give suggestions back and forth to one another. So again, that's, that's kind of what I think would be good about these videos. One is we get to see some setups that we might not would ever see cross our paths on YouTube because they're not going to make a video or whatever it might be. It's also a way for us to get to know each other better because I might talk to Rob or Jason or Jonathan and you know in the comments whenever they comment on a tool of mine and I get to know who they are. So I kind of got a feeling sometimes of who some of you are. We comment back and forth so much or you email me or whatever it is. But now it's a chance for you all to get to know each other along with me to where it's just a community, to where we're sharing ideas, we're sharing tools. Uh, because I think, again, no, no matter what trade we're in, no matter what line of work we're in, if we're a homeowner, DIY, if we use tools, if we do the kind of work that we do, the more we talk to one another, share ideas, the better off we're all going to be. And I think that's just going to work out great for all of us. So, again, let me know in the comments below what you thought about this video idea. If you want to see more of them, let me know that below as well. Send in photos if you want to be in one. And then, again, I'll probably just do a couple at a time as I get them. But again, send in those pictures if you can. I think if you send them in to me in horizontal mode, like landscape mode, I think it's going to work out best for you all to be able to see things. I can see them fine on my screen, but I think for me to edit it and to make it show up on TV screens or your phones or your iPads, wherever you watch YouTube, I think it's going to look best if you take your photos in landscape mode. But let me know if there's anything different I can do. Talk less, talk more do whatever. Again, this is the first video. This is kind of a trial basis of this to see how it goes, but I hope that this video was interesting. I hope you get something out of it. I hope something becomes useful, and if anything, I hope we just grow closer together as a community, but as always, stay safe. Have a blessed day. I'll see you on the next video.